Hi, I'm Jeff. And I'm Patty. And we have a lot of really cool things to share with you today, but first we're going to take a little side trip. We're going to go exploring. That's right, 20 miles from where we're camping right now, Tombstone, Arizona. We're talking about the Old West, Doc Holliday, Wyatt Earp, also the OK Corral. Oh my gosh, this town is from the 1800s. I think it's kind of touristy, but oh, we'll check it out anyway. If anything, we'll get ourselves some barbecue for lunch. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> and then after that, 20 miles from Tombstone is another really amazing place. Mm -hmm. It's called Bisbee, Arizona. It's close to the Mexican border, actually. But oh, I hear it's a really cute little town tucked in the mountains. You know what cute <sighs> means? We're going shopping. Oh, we may do that too. Sure, why not? All right, fasten your seatbelt. Ready to go? Yeah, let's go. Let's get out Come of here. Come on. Welcome to our YouTube channel, Rockin' and Wheelin'. For over three months now, we've been living full time in an RV, and one of the big questions we get asked all the time, where are you going next? I'm the one that does all the planning. I start with the destination. For example, we're in Tucson right now. So my plan is to go through Dallas, which we'll probably stay there for a few days. Right. <laughs> then we're gonna go down to New Orleans. That's a must. Probably another few days there. I heard there's a nice place in the French Quarter Ooh, to stay. Yeah. Definitely. And then we're going to go across the Florida Panhandle, up the East Coast to eventually arrive in Ohio in April. So Jeff can get his driver's license renewed. Right. We're trying to avoid the cold weather. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. Mm -hmm. We use an app on the internet. It's called RV Trip Wizard. Mm -hmm. Yep, you pick a destination and it customizes a route based on your RV's height and weight. It avoids the low clearances and things like that. You can then see your route with campgrounds, gas stations, you set your distances and the map will make sure that you don't go too far. We like to keep it at no more than four to five hours of driving. Right, yeah. Yeah, getting to our destination in time to set up and get hooked up before it gets dark. Yeah, that's a must, it mm -hmm. really is. You yeah. don't wanna pull into a place when it's really dark outside and try to hook up. No, you sure don't. But this app can also tell you when to stop for gas. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It'll also estimate the cost of your trip with gasoline and campground fees as mm -hmm. well. So so that's not bad. Yep, it sure does. You can see here, I'm already planning the first leg of our trip to Dallas. By the way, it's $49 for a year subscription. Right, nothing's free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we also use Google Maps to research areas too, especially if it's a short distance to the next destination. Yep, and we've been here in Arizona for the past few weeks. Now the state parks are beautiful. We recently stayed at Pikachu Peak State Park. I think I said that right. I hope, uh, better you than me. <laughs> yeah, it's just north of Tucson. The hiking is great, awesome. especially Hunter's Trail. Oh my gosh, it's a tough hike. It takes you all oh the way up gosh. to the peak and it's got amazing views. They tell you to wear gloves, to bring a pair of gloves with you. I mean, Lowe's has a pair of gloves for a buck 99 and it's really worth it because there are big cables that you have to grab onto and kind of hoist yourself up and also kind of let yourself down when you come back. This is not an easy trail. Oh man. This is a tough trail. It is but it's really adventurous and it's really a lot of fun. We were sore for the next couple days. How long did it take us to do that? Four hours. At least. Yeah. We also stayed at Karchner Cavern State Park near Benson, Arizona. This park is famous for caverns that were discovered in 1962. There were two guys that were cave hunting. They found a small crevice. They could feel warm, moist air coming out. So what they do, they crawled into it. Can you imagine that? I couldn't. You imagine, imagine crawling into a small cave in Arizona where there's tarantulas, oh. where there's scorpions, <laughs> where there's snakes, no. bats. They crawled for over 200 feet until they came to this huge cavern, so this brave. big room. Yeah. And they knew they had discovered something really special. Yeah. And also there is a museum at Karchner and you can take a tour of the caverns, but make sure you book ahead because the tours fill up fast. Yeah, they do. We couldn't get in. Yeah. The hiking here is awesome too. It sure is. Mm -hmm. The Foothills Trail, which connects to the Mountain View Trail, is a fantastic hike. When you get to the top, the view will knock you out. Yeah, it's, it's really incredible. Speaking of incredible, we're on our way to show you some fun little towns here in Arizona. 
Tombstone and Bisbee. As a matter of fact, we just passed the sign. We're now in Tombstone. First thing you see, an RV park. Yep, the Tombstone RV Park and Campground. Looks pretty nice, and it's right near the Boot Hill Graveyard, too. You know, Tombstone is known for its Wild West history. It all started as a small mining town. And today, it looks almost like it did back in the 1800s, including the hitching posts, dirt streets. They really make it a fun experience with reenactment gunfights, including the famous shootout at the OK Corral. Yeah. Wyatt Earp was actually the deputy marshal of Tombstone, and he was one of the deadliest gunslingers. You'll see everyone dressed up as cowboys, gunslingers, and even the women dress up too. Yeah. There's a lot of shops, quite a few restaurants and saloons. <laughs> Most of the action is on historic Allen Street, which we're approaching right now. Uh oh, looks like there's trouble brewing here. But I'll tell you what, if we go the other way, there's an old stagecoach that you can ride in. The town looks and even feels authentic. It has the old wooden walkways. We're not sure who Puny John is, but he has a barbecue place. Even Doc Holliday still has a saloon. He's long gone, but looks like this is a pretty good place to hang out for some good food and drinks. Definitely a dive into the past. And yes, there's plenty of shopping. Everything from t-shirts to vintage western wear, there's jewelry. As you can see, Patty isn't wasting any time scoping things out. You never know what's really going to catch her eye. Hey, Patty, are you hungry? There's a place called Big Nose Kate's Saloon. It was originally a luxury hotel in 1880, but burnt down in 1882. and was then rebuilt into the bar that it is today. But they say it's haunted by the handyman who lived in the basement. Oh, no. She was a pretty tough woman, and her longtime companion was Doc Holliday. She was his girlfriend. They say she got her name from either having a big nose or because she had a habit of sticking her nose into other people's business. No, I couldn't imagine. Yeah, she actually lived to 90, which is pretty incredible because back in those days, you know, they, they didn't live that long. I think it's pretty obvious why Jeff wanted to sit here by the bar. Well, I guess it's time to see the rest of the town here. There's the famous OK Corral where they reenact the legendary shootout with Wyatt Earp and a group of outlaws. And there's plenty of shows that you can see. The guys are real friendly. They're helpful. They'll tell you all about those shows. Oh, it looks like Patty has made some new friends. Oh, these guys are so cool. I sure feel safe. <laughs> It's a fun place to stop and just take in the history. Yes, they didn't call them gunslingers for nothing. <laughs> the ladies were a big part of the Old West, and they are dressed to the nines. I met this lady, and I'll tell you, she plays the part perfect. She even made me laugh. Oh, Jeff, she's not your type. <laughs> There's the Wyatt Earp Hotel, and most of these buildings are over 150 years old. And if you're a history buff, especially the Old West, make sure when you visit, you take in all the museums. Lots of old artifacts, including this old six-shooter and holster. We even checked out the Tombstone Courthouse that was built in 1882. The two-story Victorian-style structure was turned into a historical museum and then designated as one of the Arizona State Parks. Time to wrap things up, though, here in Tombstones. Now all I gotta do is find Patty. Let me guess. Uh, looks like she's found some nice goodies here. One store had a great rule. Gotta love it. Speaking of loving things, you're also going to love the fact that another very interesting town is just 20 miles south of Tombstone, so you can easily visit both of them in one day. We're headed to Bisbee now. It's actually a former copper mining town that back in the late 1800s was very upscale and was compared to the likes of San Francisco and New York culture-wise. Can you imagine that? Yeah. South Arizona? Yeah. Copper mining made Bisbee rich, and here in Arizona, much of the minerals like copper, silver, and gold, they were found either on top or near the top of the soil, and that made mining rather easy. Mm -hmm. There's a really cool tunnel you'll drive through, the Mule Pass Tunnel. It was cut through the Mule Mountains about 60 years ago, and it took about 150 workers five months of digging, drilling, and blasting day and night from June to November of 1957 to bore through about 1,400 feet of granite just to make the tunnel. Imagine what it takes to make a countertop. Oh my gosh. 
gosh. Anyway, to dedicate the tunnel, they used a copper ribbon. Mm -hmm. And did you know that Bisbee was named after a San Francisco judge by the name of DeWitt Bisbee in 1880? Wow. He was responsible for getting financial backing for the Copper Queen mine after copper was discovered by a Lieutenant John Rucker and his tracker looking for Indians in the Mule Mountains. They actually saw signs of copper. And then before you know it, the prospectors rushed in. The drive is so beautiful, as you can see. I love this little town. The historic part of Bisbee is actually called Old Bisbee. The narrow and winding roads have a very European feeling yeah, to it. Yeah, they really mm -hmm. do. You know, there's a lot of homes, and they're built right on the side of the hills here. And there's a unique physical fitness challenge called the Bisbee 1000, the Great Stair Climb. It's a four and a half mile course with nine staircases over a thousand total steps connected by winding roads. Now, while doing this, you'll see some of the most scenic parts of Bisbee. Well, we made it almost to the top. And it's very gorgeous up here. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Look at that. How you feel? Oh, I'm pooped. And now the fun part, and that is driving down all the hills and through all the curves. Oh, I love seeing all the houses tucked on the hill. You probably think I'm driving like an idiot. You are driving too fast on this. <laughs> all right. Hey, there's plenty more to do in Bisbee. Oh, yeah. You can still see some of the greatest mines in the world in Bisbee. In almost 100 years of continuous production before they closed in 1975, the mines produced well over $6.1 billion worth of very pure copper. Also gold, lead, and zinc. Wow. You can even take a tour of the Queen Mine, which goes deep into the old workings of this famous mine, where extremely rich copper ore was mined in the early days. Now, if you go to Bisbee, you gotta make sure to check out Erie. Street. There are some really very cool classic cars, including an old Greyhound bus. That's oh, amazing. <laughs> it's like you step back in time. Yeah. <laughs> we had to get out and take pictures. It was a whole lot of fun seeing these old cars and photographing them. It's just another thing that makes Bisbee pretty special and a great way for us to wind up our day. Yep. You know, throughout our travels, we come across some really great people and sites. For example, in Bisbee, this young lady had the most awesome face mask. It was so cute. We also saw a house built of stone from the 1800s, and it was decorated with pigs. With pigs. <laughs> this older woman seemed to represent the past in Bisbee. I wish we could have sat and talked to her. Oh, I bet she has some great stories. Patty here made one mistake. She didn't buy this sweatshirt. <laughs> We've met some of the nicest people along the way so far. Oh, I'll tell you, I'll never forget Nellie and Richard from Colorado. Richard let me ride his electric bike one night. <laughs> then there was Dave and Kathy. They're from our hometown and they were camping right next to us in Sawara National Park. Nice people. I'm telling you, man, what a coincidence. Mm -hmm. And then, oh my gosh, we met Traveling Robert. We ran into him at the dump station at the Pikachu Peak State Park. Hey, you know what? You <laughs> never know who you're going to meet at the dump station. <laughs> He's a great guy. Check him out on YouTube. Well, that wraps it up on our day trip. Now you know where we're going next. Yeah, because we don't. No, seriously. Don't be shy if you see us in a campground. We love to chit chat. Make sure you say hello. Thanks again for traveling with us and supporting us and hitting that subscribe button. And stay tuned because we got plenty more to come. Until then, stay active. Stay safe. And stay out of trouble. Mm -hmm. Bye.